What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And we're speaking the language of bromance, not betas. No, yeah. not at all. Oh, Richard, we were invited back to the Big River Comic Con in Hannibal, Missouri, just like last time. year. Yeah, we got to host the panels, and we got to have a table. People came by, said, what's a bromance? Oh, we got asked if we were dating, which was great. Yeah, that felt good. Yeah, so like it started out like you came back that first day and you're like, oh my God, Sean, I was at the hotel. Somebody saw me. So you one of the bromance guys? And you said, yeah. Oh my God, that totally happened. I had, there was a person. Like my kid listens to this. said, are you one of the podcast guys? And I said, yes. And they said, my daughter listens to your show. And I said, no. And they said, yeah. And I was like, and I'm looking around. I'm like, am I being punked? <laughs> Where's Aston? Yeah. But no. They said, which one are you? Are you, the fu- are you the funny one? You're like, which one's the funny one? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they asked for a picture. That's the first time that's ever happened in my entire life. Yeah. And you came back and told me. And I was like, oh, I wish somebody would ask me for a picture. But I was still on high. I was like, well, at least somebody knows our show. And we're sitting there waiting for people to show up. Like the was, she was like at least one of the first five people that came to our table. Yeah, maybe like I don't know, like let's say fifteen. Like very much like teenage, you know, angsty kind of kid comes up, looks at our table, looks us both dead in the eyes, and says, "Are you two dating?" Yeah, I'm like, no. Why? Why do you call it a bromance? Because, you know, it's like, you know, bros and a bromance. It's like, you know, platonic love. Oh, so what do you do? Like, well, we do a podcast. It's on, you know, audio form stuff. Yeah. I only listen. I only watch YouTube, I only watch YouTube videos. videos. And then watch. Like, oh, well, you know. Well, no, the, the part where she like dropped the mic on us. I was like, oh, well, we're on YouTube. But, you know, it's just the audio. and We got a picture and, you know, that's all. And she just looks kind of just like, pfft. Everybody does that yeah. and walked away. Uh, you know what? That actually felt great. That felt good. You know yeah. why? Because I came in on this high and I was feeling good. Yep. And I was like, there it is. I was like, I need that to feel real. <clears throat> yep. Keep me grounded, you know? Keep me grounded. That's right. Almost had a little bit of self confidence and she just burned it all to the ground. You're like, you thanks, know what? kid. That's fine. That's totally fine. Yep. I I, I mean I cried it. for I an hour, it. but <laughs> I'm not saying that like please everybody send me your you know please leave me your please leave your internet hate at my doorstep. <laughs> I'm not inviting it. I guess I'm just saying that you know. I mean we're at the point where it's like we get you know half and half. It's like you know every six years we get somebody's like oh my god I know you, and then every six years somebody's like whatever you do is stupid. <laughs> oh well, thanks. I think it's but because it wasn't they, it was honest, but it wasn't malicious. That's what made me feel good about it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like whenever you have a toddler and you're like, Do I look fat in this? And they're like, Your fat looks face. You're like, oh. <laughs> or your face looks fat. You're like, oh, well. I mean it's honesty, yeah. but it still hurts. But go to your room. <laughs> but Richard, for this we got back to back weeks of Big River Comic Con on Language of Bromance. It's the the two panels that we got to host. And our first one, uh, is with a somebody who is held world titles. Yeah. Multiple times. You know, it didn't really like the gravity of that. The gravity of that really didn't hit me until afterwards where I sat back and I was like, man, that guy's won. That guy's won world titles, world championships world like yeah multiple times he was the peak of his profession multiple times and great guy um you know you and i both are not like huge ufc fans yeah we've watched some here and there um but i am a huge fan of talking to people and seeing their kind of their progression through life and what they've done 
Um, and so we won't really bury the lead too much. We got to talk with UFC world champion, nine-time world champion, Matt Hughes. Nine times. Oh, came to the con, had his belt, was sh- let, taking pictures with people with it. Um, so it was was a really, really great time. Um, and I guess uh, he didn't really talk about it too much, and we didn't really dive into it. And just so if, I don't know if anybody listening to this doesn't know who Matt Hughes is, but former champion in UFC, um, had a very horrific uh, train accident um, a few years back um, and has made huge progress in, you know, where he is today. You know, it was a situation that was really, really scary, um, but him and his family have kind of like rallied around it and he's just made huge pro- progressions in his life you know, kind of from that point on. So um, we didn't talk about it too much. Kind of like one of the reasons is because, you know, one, he's talked about it a ton. And two, I, I kind of want to talk more about like just his career, just like yeah. him as a person. I mean, it, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. Like people should go look. It's definitely a super inspirational story, mm-hmm. but you know, that's like, I mean, regardless of anything, that man could still punch a hole through my chest. So, oh yeah, I don't, you won't really see it, but there's a point where he's talking about it and he grabbed my leg, Richard, and it took every ounce of my being not to scream because <laughs> that dude's got a killer grip. See, that's why I sat, that's why I, I put you <laughs> in the middle and I sat on the opposite end because I, that's what I was afraid of. Cause I'm, cause I was afraid yeah. that you were going to ask a question and be like, so how hard do you hit? you know, now and they'd be like, Oh, here, I'll show you whop. And then I, and then it breaks three of my ribs. Yeah. Punches me into you. And you're like, well, that's all the bro. <laughs> <for the show." laughs> I'm Sean. And I'm unconscious, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So let's tee it up. It is our panel at the big river comic con 2022 with Matt Hughes, nine time UFC world champion. Big River Comic Con, are you excited? I see a great audience right here. All right. Mark Dotson is in the house. Hey back there. Yes. Everybody give it up for him. Who's excited to meet him? Yes? All right. I'm going to hand it over to the Bromance guys right here. They have a great panel for you guys. You guys are going to be highly entertained. Are you ready? Woo! All right. No, you won't bump. Oh. How's everybody doing? Welcome to Big River Comic Con. All right, well, we're really, really excited for this panel. So let's bring him out. I want to bring out Matt Hughes, nine times UFC world champion. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. It's nice to be around good people. That's, uh, I was talking to one of the guys back there, and uh, they said this was your first con. First con ever? Yes. Uh, I've never went to one of these because I think I'm not a big enough dork. <laughs> <laughs> so how's the interactions been with everybody? Everyone's been very, very nice. Sweet. That's, that, that's if the people are nice, I, I don't get tired. If people just want stuff and just... Very, very demanding. It wears me out, so I'm able to go all, all day here. Yeah, oh, awesome. You've got the energy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I guess uh, we can start out. I know you're from Illinois. Um, grew up on a farm, correct? Don't, don't hold that against me. <laughs> <laughs> I just like my state. <laughs> so, uh, can you tell us a little bit about growing up? I, I grew up on a, a family farm with my a twin brother. So, with my twin brother next to me, I, I couldn't. I wouldn't get scared at, at, at all. We would climb the harvester, and so the harvester's 80 foot tall, so we climb up to the top, freak my mom out, but <laughs> we're just kids being kids, so I, my dad worked me so hard, but in wrestling and fighting, if I had a coach told me to do something, you just do it, you told no questions asked, so that was good for me. My my a- a- athletic career because I just did what the coach said. For sure, for sure. Oh, uh, so so yeah, I I, t- I totally get what you're saying because it's you know, you're growing up and then it's like, hey, you got work to do, you got chores to do, no questions asked, let's go, let's go, and then 
you get to you get to like wrestling and 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 it's no questions asked and then you're like oh yeah well you know I I, I grew up on this I was raised that, on this that, that's that was life for me yeah yeah so 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 wrestling in high school did you have any any like uh like big inspirations for of of like like I, were there were there people that you were looking up to while you were you know in, in high school and stuff. <laughs> When I started wrestling as a freshman in high school, my cousin was a senior, so he was inspiration for me. But when I, I got in wrestling in the high school, I learned of, of Dan Gable, and that was my big inspiration, trying to be as good as Dan, Dan Gable. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so, so the so, I I guess my thing is is it seems like like. UFC is such a radical career choice. So, I, I guess, like when I was in high school, it was not something I would have even conceived of going like, well, I'll just, you know, I could go from here to here to here. So I guess I'm more, I'm curious, like, what that journey was like. Like when, like when did you first hear about it, and and then go and then and then go from that to saying to yourself. Oh well, I could, I could do, I could do that. I, I never had the moment where I thought I could do it. I just, when I wrestled through high school, and I was good at high school, so I wrestled through high school and th- through college, and then at the end of my college career, I was one to compete, and I was, I wasn't wrestling anymore. So, I, I just took up fighting as a hobby to compete. So I took up my first fight. My first fight was in Chicago, Illinois, at a high school for a hundred dollars. Oh, wow! Oh, it's just amazing the road you get on and where you lead up. So, four or five years after that, I was in the USC and won my fight. So that started my whole whole, whole USC career. So can you walk me through that first fight? Like I imagine, like you wrestled and everything, so you're kind of used to that kind of combativeness. But what was that first actual? Just you know, in rest, in fighting, the rest gets quick where the fight's on that. But uh, I can take him down, or I can pin him off and sit and keep him on his feet. So I fought a taekwondo go, taekwondo guy that thought he was gonna knock me out quick. And he, as he figured out if he could hit me, I could take him down. So I took him down, and only last like 45 seconds. But oh wow! I had him down, and I had his throat, and I was punching him. And he said to the ref, "That's illegal." And the ref said, "No, it's not." So I just kept punching him, and then he, he tapped out. Uh, and the hundred dollars went to my buddies who came up and watched me. We went to a bar and the hundred dollars was gone, gone yeah, quick. Yeah, sorry, gone. And then a year later, I thought I was a submate because I didn't get a hundred. I got two hundred for a fight. Oh, oh big double. money! Uh, yeah, big go. money! <laughs> so it's a forty-five second fight. How long did you train to get to that point? Like, you know, most people train for their fight. Well, that was a small fight. So I was coaching wrestling at college. So I was. I was tr- I was training every day anyway, so that poor guy didn't have a chance. <laughs> and I'm not breaking on myself, but if he's close enough to touch me, I'm close. I'm way too close to t- take him down. Yeah, I don't think it's bragging too much. I mean, you've got the titles to prove that you know you're legit. You're you're, you're good. <laughs> Stop bragging if it's true. <laughs> I I, w- I would disagree. <laughs> um, like. Well, uh, to that effect, like, I think that, I, I guess the que- one question I have, and this might get a laugh, I don't know, but what is the feeling of knowing that you're, like, you walk into a room and and it's it's very apparent that you could probably just beat the ever-living crap out of everyone in that room? Even, like, even, like, even now, like, you just walk in and be like, yeah, all the yeah, uh, no, nobody here, nobody here has a chance. I guess walk, walking, knowing that you that that you have the 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 skills, the talent, and the ability to to take anybody down. I feel like that's that's got to be like a, a powerful feeling. 
if you don't know, in June 60, 2017, I was hit by a train, so my life totally changed after that. But sure. before that, I was the man that <laughs> thought that. Now I'm just kind of curious. I always look for my exits, and I'm very protective of my sister, so I just I scan the room for danger because right. I just I don't have as much confidence in myself. But I know if anyone gets close enough, they're close. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> that's what that's what I'm saying. Like even still, when yeah. when I want to tell someone, I say. What did you say? And I, I had them come through. That's when I could get my answer. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I just like people extremely close so I can, t I can touch them. Yeah, yeah. Get everybody within striking distance. <laughs> just in case. Yes. That's why I'm on this side of the table. <laughs> so one thing I'm always interested with, uh, like UFC and these kind of combative sports, like, you know, when you're in there, it's, it's on. It's a battle between two people, and it's just intense, like, you know, watching those fights. And then right after, it's, you know, handshakes, hugs. How do you go from having it turned on 100% to then kind of more of a relaxed, like... When I was fighting in the UFC, it seemed like I was walking in second. So when I walked in the cage, I felt like I was going to home, my home, and, and there was a perpetrator in my house. So I felt like it was my place, so this is a guy that's stuck in my house. So that was my mindset. Kill this guy that's trying to hurt me and my family. I took everything I, I love and put it behind him, so I had to go through him to get to what what what, what I, I, I love. So that was my mindset. So as soon as the fire was over, I just t t turned it off, off like a switch. Uh, I'm always curious too with like, uh, you know, they talk like basketball, there's a lot of trash talk and stuff like that. Uh, was there much trash talk while you were in UFC? And if so, is there like your favorite line that you were said? Or you oh, like your go-to. Yeah, like, like your go-to line or the one that was told to you that it's probably safe for kids or maybe clean <laughs> up, but. Um, I was never a trash talk because my thought was, always do you're talking in the octagon and that was my theory, but there was a guy named Frank Trigg who talked a lot of trash. And he didn't only talk trash about me, he talked about my family. He said he had a better upbringing than me, and which he, he, he didn't, but. <laughs> <laughs> but he's also the guy that made me in the crotch and hurt, hurt me kind of bad. And he knows he, he need me in the crotch. So that's one fight where I was feeding him and he turned his back to me so I can't punch the back of his head so I was glad when he turned around I could punch his face some more and, and a fight I, I never got pissed because that's when, when you, you lose your mind and I was what I always thought a lot so I didn't want to not be able to do that but that's one fight where I beat him on aggression yeah, like okay, you were you were talking about like you know the headspace and stuff. You should, you know, um, I, I guess what what is the best like headspace to be in when you're when you're coming into a fight? Because you know, you I I feel like you're you're dancing this line between uh, you, you're dancing this line between being like you know, full out aggression, like I'm gonna, you know, like I'm gonna rip this guy apart, and then on the flip side of it, going, no, I need to maintain like a cooler, more disciplined head. But I think that, you know, I mean, I feel like that, that aggression needs to be there, but I, I guess I'm wondering like, what's what's the best balance of that to, to strike if, when you're going in? I, I would say I always got scared in a fight, and because anything can happen there. And so I was always kind of scared before I fight, and I think that was good for me th to know that I, I don't want to mess up and make enough mistakes where he can capitalize. But I thought that was good for me. I was always a, a little bit scared. If you're not scared at all, all you're going to have problems. But with I, my, I was always a big thinker, so I thought through everything. Because, you know what, in fighting, to every move there's a counter and to every counter there's a counter so it's a huge ch chess match yeah 
Yeah, yeah, I feel, yeah, it's, 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 it's a mental game, like, I'm gonna do this, and, you know, I, I, I would think, like, while you're, you know, while the, you two guys are circling each other, it's okay, if I do this, he's probably gonna do this, and then, okay, so I should try this, and... Y yes, and when I circle, some people can all circle one way, so I circle this way for a bit, then I circle the opposite way, and see which way he does cir circle, what, 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 well, and... I, I think that, you know, a, a, a lot of, some big misconceptions are probably that, you know, like, oh, it's two guys and they go into a ring and they, you know, they whack each other in the head and then, and then some guy gets a shiny belt. Like, that's, there's, I, there's so much more to it. There's so much that leads up to it in terms of, in, in, in terms of, you know, the physical training. Because I would think that you actually, you know, depending on your opponent, you probably alter your training routine depending on, you know, the my, opponent. My, my opponent. Yeah. And my theory was, if I trained correctly, the fight's gonna be easy. Exactly. I I had the best training camp in the world and we beat the heck out of each other. So if I could escape, be killed by my teammates, the fight was gonna be easy. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like, the, the fight doesn't even start you know, once once the bell dings, there's a whole build up to it. There's a and 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 then and then again, like you were saying earlier, there's you know there's like the, the there's a bit of a mental chess game to it, and there the athleticism is you know off the charts crazy, but it's like I said, I, I think it's 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 the it's the the mind the head the headspace and the mind, the mind game of it that, that really and, interests me. With it. And you brought up an interesting. I back when I was fighting, my training camps was anywhere from four to six six months. So for wow. four to six months, you can get ready for one, one, one opponent. Um, wow. Since you guys had the max, I'm gonna ask you a question. Yeah. Who, 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 who was my easiest fight in, in the octagon? Who was your easiest fight in the octagon? I, I'm no, asking you. Oh, asking me? Oh, uh... I don't know. Um, I actually don't know. I I I I I don't, I don't want to guess. And again, I'm glad I'm on this side of the table. <laughs> Holy Crazy. Holy Crazy for sure. And it's funny that everyone in in the out out is they interviewed and asked that they thought I was going to lose. But I, I had such a good sermon in the locker room before, before the fight. I don't care if it was King Kong. I was going to win. <laughs> So when you go in with that like mentality, like you've just trained, you're perfect for this. Like, do you feel almost invincible when you walk in there? With him, I, I did. You did. <laughs> and they, they put so much tape on your hands, and the, the gloves are there to protect me, not not my opponent. I was on the back of Gracie, hit hit in the head, and I could feel that his head through through the gloves, through the wrap, and through on my hand. So I was hit, hitting him hard, and he. John McCarthy stopped the fight because Gracie taps. So Gracie does tap, and I didn't think he would, but I beat the, I beat him sis 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 sisless. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can clap for that. Yeah, Go for yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm sorry about my speech since the wreck. I just sometimes have. Worse, have a problem coming out of the, out of it. So I think you guys can understand me, even though, I'm, even though I'm not a big a nerd for you guys. <laughs> well, I mean, I think I we're gonna that, turn him. It's yeah, fine. It's we'll good. Convert. So you know, you say you're not a big nerd, but you know, everybody here loves video games, and you have appeared in multiple video games as yourself. What's What's that like? Because I don't think anybody here can say, oh yeah, I'm totally in a video game except when I create my own character. <laughs> but you earned being in that video game. What, what was that like when you first heard that you're going to be in a game? Uh, I, I, I'm a very honest person, but I, I didn't care because I, I don't play video games sure, that much. Yeah. I, I did play Super Mario Brothers and let's say a video game. Sure. I, I'll think of the name, but <laughs> it's... We go to the a jungle. Oh, Donkey Kong? No, no. Pitfall. I'll Number. think of it, thank you. But you search for stuff and you find it. 
Okay. I did that back in college. I was kind of. I did it. I missed. <laughs> I miss plenty of classes. So just to, my sister hates the story, but it's the truth. But when I went to college, I went. My coach called me up and said, "Matt, come in, in my office. We have a big problem." So I said, "Okay." So I go into the office, and we're sitting across each other from the desk. Of the, the desk, and he says, "Matt, you won credit short for being eligible next semester." I said. Coach, what are we going to do? He said a piece of paper over to me. He said, sign this. So I signed it. I, I did it. And I go, oh, okay, Coach, what was that? And he goes, congratulations, congratulations, just ace my class. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just arrested. So, you know, these football players and basketball players, they get special treatment. So that was my easiest class. And I went to school for two reasons, wrestling and, and girls, <laughs> minor and major. We know you're good at wrestling. Were you good at the other one, too? Uh, oh. <laughs> nah, it's good. I was a better wrestler. <laughs> So, uh, you know, you, you have all this work, you get into UFC, and you make it up to the point where you're fighting for the title. What was it like when you won the title for the very first time? Because that's like just the peak of excellence. Yeah. Uh, I be, I was fighting Carlos Noon, and Carlos Noon had just beat my coach and mentor, Pat Melodish, so that was an easy fight to train for. When I go to, to the gym to train for Carlos, I had like 20 guys went to to be on me because they weren't they about to come back to uh, 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 Iowa. So finding a, a workout partner was easy for that fight because we all just like Carlos Noon so much. <laughs> and when I walked in the octagon and Carlos, he came in second, I was happy he come to my house because I was going to take that t title back to uh, 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 Iowa. That's awesome. So what was the celebration like after you won that? <laughs> family show, family show. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't kiss and tell. <laughs> so uh, this is something that's kind of a, a personal interest to me. Um, you know, if everybody knows, Matt's got the belt back there. You can take pictures with it with him. I'm always curious, how does, how does that work? So I know you won the belt, you've got it. Uh, is that the, the original belt that you won, or how does that work? Uh, I, I don't think they do this now, but I've got nine belts because I've got, I won it twice and have seven defenses, so every time I took a belt, a belt but I don't think that they do that, that now. They one belt that kind of travels around. I, these people make so much money, give the boys their, their belts. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> So you wait. So, so you have so, so you have nine belts. Do you just kind of like you're just like like oh this is my this is my home belt and this is my this is my store belt. I think I'll, I'll train in this belt. I'm not. It's my Tim, nighttime belt. I'm not Tim Sylvia. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tim Sylvia would take a shower with his belt off. <laughs> but my sister has more. Um, I'm, I'm a belt busting when. when when I die, I don't want anything to do with with the UFC or being a champion on my on my ass. So I, I just look at myself as, as a common person. Sure, sure. I would also wear the belt in the shower. <laughs> I wear that belt everywhere. Um, I was gonna open up um, to questions from the audience. If you guys, if I, if you guys had any questions for for Matt, I mean. Feel free. I can't. Prob I can't bring a microphone down there. So I guess maybe if if anybody, you know, you, I can pick people, you know, and you can just shout them out. So it, that would be easy. It kills me every day that I went out on this sport with a loss. So it would be Josh Koscheck. Very easy to answer. Awesome. And just you know, I was supposed to fight Diego Sanchez, and. I think my wrestling was much better than Diego, so I took the fight, and then after Diego started training, he got he got knocked out of the out of 
he couldn't fight anymore because he got he had injured. So Josh took the fight. So Josh was a, a last minute replacement. And if I don't take the fight, I, I don't get 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 paid. So I kind of had to. But he Josh it was as good a fight for me as, as Diego would have been. So it's kind of interesting too, like, so you're talking about like taking fights, you kind of got to pick which one you want, like what's the steps that you have to, you know, when, what goes into making that decision that I'm going to take this fight versus this one? Then, then as I said, I was easy, easy to kind of find a fight for, because when they said take the fight, I said, okay, I, I never said no to him, not, not once I ever said no, I just fought whoever they put in front of me. Did you ever have anybody that said uh, that, that they put you up in front for them to fight you and they said no? Uh, you don't know uh, that? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if that's something that they share. It's, but it makes sense that they wouldn't. But So, I, my my best fight in the UFC was a guy named Mark Sakurai. And he was from Japan. And, and th they come there and said he was the Michael Jordan of I I MMA. And when he come to the United States to fight me, the years he told me, I'm sorry, man, but he doesn't want to be around you or be around you at all. So you know what I do? Every time I'm close to the guy, I go up to, what's up, Mark? I just made him my best friend. I, if I got in his head, that was fine with me. That's awesome. I love that. Uh, win the fight up here. That's what it is. You win the fight up here. Um, did, anybody, did anybody else have it? Oh, Justin's got one. Hardest hitter. Hardest hitter. George St. Pierre, and he's also the toughest guy I fought in there, but by, by, by far. Oh. Um, oh, we got we got another Did question. Who was your favorite fighter in the What? What? One of my buddies, probably Chuck Liddell, because when he went out there, he went out there to knock some of my head off. <laughs> oh, we got we got another one here. I, I loved it because we had people come fly in their from other countries. One guy, we beat them up bad, but one guy said he wore an, a note to Pat and left in the me middle of the night. And Pat read the note. He goes, you guys beat me up so bad, I just want to crawl under the mat and, and hide from you guys. <laughs> so we just, we knew we were, we were going to beat people up, and I'm just surprised they come in to train with us. <laughs> <laughs> so I know like you're part of the, uh, the Ultimate Fighter as well, correct? Um, so do you kind of, did you really enjoy kind of training new fighters and kind of getting them into it? Uh, I, I, I did, but I, I hate being in Vegas for like three, two months and too much concrete out there. I, I like cornfields, corn yeah. but just... I like coach on the show, but I didn't like being in Vegas for, for that long. In a bye week, you fly in on a Monday and fly out on Sunday, and that was perfect to be in Vegas, but two months is way too far, too long. <laughs> too much sand. Sand and concrete. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm a country boy. I, I like to look at my cornfields. <laughs> I would totally agree on that. Uh, so, like, you know, some of the guys that you, you trained up, like, watching their first fight almost like does it kind of feel like almost like a kid kind of like sending him out there and seeing him succeed it, it reminded me of my coaching days in, in college because so, I coach these guys and, and you get to see them compete I know this, it's probably a pretty obvious question but uh, did you enjoy being in the, the octagon with yourself or did you enjoy training uh, I, I enjoy training much more because you walk into a gym twice a day with the buddies and you just beat each other up. <laughs> but I was never a guy that needed the the the, the limelight. Like Tim Sui, he he loved people knowing him and getting attention. And I just I didn't care about that. I don't let, even I don't like being the guy in the corner about uh -huh. there. I just I, I and my sister has a hard time with this, but. I was coming before I hit fame, and I want to be the, the, that guy now, even though my theory is you guys all paid for my paycheck, so 
I retired at age 39 because of you guys, so I owe you guys whatever you want, so come back there, we'll get a picture or whatever, but I'm very grateful that you people let, 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 let that happen. So thank you guys. <laughs> no, no, nothing. I, I'm a Christian and I'm not a su super sissy guy. He's walking under ladders, he's throwing cats in front of him. He's like, whatever. Whatever. I'm invincible. But we got another question. What was the motivation for you versus Coyce? Was it Bad Blood? Was it Wrestling versus BJJ? I didn't like that so many people thought he was going to win. And when. When I was a kid and my dad wanted me to do something, he told me I couldn't do it. So if you tell me I can't do it, I'm probably going to try my hardest. But everyone said that I wasn't going to be old, so that was my motivation. So when you were a kid, uh, you know, like, what were you like wanting to be when you grew up? I was probably wanting to be a farmer because I just didn't know. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, like you have your sister here, uh, and you and your brother, twins, uh, does she have any, would she have any stories that she would say about you two boys? Uh, oh, she laughed. <laughs> there was a chuckle there. <laughs> I, I'll let her tell one story. Okay. <laughs> She's got one story? No, you got, <laughs> come on. No, you got roped in, you got, yeah, you got to climb her on. <laughs> tell the story about me being pissed one time. I'm not his biological sister. I'm kind of an adopted sister. So luckily I didn't grow up with him. That would have been terrible. I can't imagine how bad life was for his mother having not one but two of him. That would be terrible. Um, so I know him through my brother. Uh, he and my brother would train and He's a uh, wrestle and that kind of thing. So this is the... It's Hager. That one. <laughs> So this was a pre-train accident. We were out at a local bar, and he went into the. And he, he was a happy guy, but it was he knew when he walks in a room, he could take anybody. Exactly. So I, he yeah. goes in the restroom, and uh, you tell that story. <laughs> so I go in the restroom, and there's a little big urinal right to the left, and then there's a, a big, a, a big stall, and I push the door and the stall, and it flies open. And a guy in there says, did your mom teach you to knock? I, my immediate thought was, come back with the same word. Said, did your mom teach you, you to lock the door? So I go, then I turn around, go to the urinal. I take my leg out the urinal. The whole time I'm taking the leg, this guy's going to kick my ass because he's, he's got a whole table full of guys. I got her brother with me, so I'm like... <laughs> We'll see who kicks ass. So, so he lays with that same my face and he goes out outside. This is where she picks up. He comes back from the bathroom mad. A vein is popping out through his forehead. And I'm like, what happened to you in there? He goes straight to my brother. He's like, John, there's a table full of guys and they all want to beat us up. John's like, you're, you're joking, right? And he's like, no. He's like, they're right over there. He, he told me in the bathroom, we're going outside, they're all going to beat us up. So my brother looks over the table and he sees this man telling his buddies, we're beating that guy up and his friend. They recognize him in their life. They don't stand up and I guess they tell him, you just picked a fight with a professional fighter. So he like sheepishly sits down, eyes down on his drink and does not, does not look over his shoulder at all. Well, he's pacing. And I, I wanted to see a fight happen, so I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> <"Nice on." laughs> My brother's like, no, Matt, we, they don't want to fight. This will be a bloodbath. And he's like, no, they, they told me in the bathroom they want to fight. And I kept saying, if they don't want to fight, that's fine. But they're going to go take a beating. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's a, that's a fun story that, uh, you know, we always laugh about now. Fun story for everybody except those guys. Yeah. Well, I imagine that guy walks like, who the hell? Oh, that's Matt Hughes. I'll lock the door now. <laughs> I will lock all doors for the rest of my life. 
Does, does, I, I go around saying I get punched by Matthews. Yeah, I, I was so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's you walk in, you see, you just push. It, there's no knock or anything on it. Yeah, yeah. So did uh, you know? I always you know see guys that go out and you know that that do kind of like amateur MMA type stuff, and they kind of have like that bravado, I guess. Did you have to worry about that a lot when you went out, like that situation where somebody like knows who you are and tries to test the waters? People at the rank, I ever know I was going to beat you know, anyone but so sure. I never got really t- tested. But uh, I, I'm a friendly guy, so I, I don't think I, I insinuate people to one punch me. <laughs> uh, does anybody else have any questions? questions? If not, we're, we're, we're let them go. I mean, you can still see him, but... What's your favorite movie? Send me John Wayne. I, I'm a huge John Wayne fan. Which John Wayne movie would you put your favorite? Searchers or McLean Dog. I, I like the funny, funny ones. Yeah. I'm a sucker for The Quiet Man. The Quiet Man's good. Oh, I love The Quiet Man. I always like The Cowboys. Watch it every St. Patrick's Day. Cowboys is good, too. Yeah, I love that one. All right. Uh, yeah, if, if, if... Well, oh, yep. good. I'm sorry, what? Tonight's main event. Tonight's main event. It's funny, I don't watch the UFC much anymore. Because these guys are just fighting for a paycheck. When I was fighting, we fought because we love the sport, and it's just very obvious to me these guys just want paid, and so I don't really fall a, a lot now because... I think they fight for, for the, the wrong reasons. Uh, I'm a huge American Top Team fan, so anyone from American Top Team, I'm going to be rooting for. And we have a competition back there to come watch the fights with, with me tonight, so go back there and join in. You can root American Top Team on with me too. When I'm in there and a fight is fighting, I'm always coaching the whole time. <laughs> That's awesome. I look, I look. That play by play. Oh, I think it'd be that, that seems like worth the price for that ticket there, because I mean, you if you don't know UFC and get to sit there and watch you, you're gonna learn a little bit from that. Like you're gonna pick up a ton. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I know much about it, but I like to watch it with, with people that that, that that don't. Oh sure, yeah. Get that John Madden effect. I, I, I was so you can see I take my right leg and step back and slam him but before that I thought I can only slam him once because I'm not going to be able to pick it back up but I, for that slam I slam him as hard as I can and Jens Bohr is commenting so I jump over the fence jump and hug hug Jens Bohr jump back over the fence in the octagon and that guy stood dead on the canvas totally dead he, he was out for probably 30 seconds. Oh, wow. Which I say is a long time to be knocked out. I, I love it because he was so dangerous. He's supposed to submit me, but I would already beat him in uh, Abu Dhabi. So I, I knew he if I didn't want him to, he wouldn't. But it, my brother was in, in the sands, and when I, I locked it up, my brother stood up and said, It's over. When people behind him said, the jackass, he just has the man like, Marcos, it's over! <laughs> and 20 seconds later, he was uh, asleep. <laughs> so where was your favorite place to, to have a match? Like, location, like you said, you're in Abu Dhabi, is there? In England was fine, because it was the, at the Royal Aqueda Hall, which is very prestigious, and yeah. it goes straight up, so people in the top probably had the I think they could spit on the cage, but they, they, that goes, but it's just cool. The, the bending was straight up, and it wasn't flat like most places are flat, and you had to look from, from a distance, straight up and down, but that, I, I like old prestigious places. Was anybody else? Oh, good, that, 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 and, and when I fight Gracie at California, Maybe they know. <laughs> yeah, but maybe they know. Gracie yeah. fight in California? It was, no? it was uh, in a big dome. Oh, uh, 
Was it the Staples Center? Staples yeah. Center. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I that was the goal because it just it's got history too. Yeah. That's cool. Anybody else have any other questions? Yeah. Say so we'll just last thing. We'll, do you have any like current projects or anything that you're kind of working on that you'd like to share? Yeah. I, I'm working on on me. On you. Because th- that train didn't break any bones, but it really shook my head up. So I, w- with my speeches, the one thing I thought I knew something about the body before this wreck, but I figured out the brain controls everything. So I'm just trying to get myself be- better. Yeah, and we're you know glad everything you know, was great. You know, glad to have you here and yeah. appreciate it. And everybody, Matt here. Everybody. If they want to come talk to me, yeah. I'll be in the back. Yep, yep. we'll be back there, get a picture of the belt, get one of those tickets. Well, there it was, Richard. That was our first panel from the Big River Comic Con 2022. Uh, what do you have for some Richard's closing thoughts when we kind of finish up this Matt Hughes panel? Um, I, I guess I would end it with, you know, obviously we didn't talk about, you know, his accident and everything. And again, I, I think I said it at the top. It's an inspirational story, and and people should definitely check it out. I I guess the thing that I kind of wanted to glean from from talking to him, or the thing that I wanted to try and kind of wrap my head around, is you know he he came up in a he came up in the UFC fighting arena at a time when I don't think UFC was really the the spectacle that it is today. And so I guess what I wanted to know is, you know, what was that like what was that road like? What what possesses somebody to what what sends somebody down down that path and how does some, how will someone discover and head down that path, especially considering that Again, like the guy got to, you know, the top of his, the top of his craft for lack of a better word. And, and so I guess I just wanted to know like what that journey was like and and try to kind of understand more of the subtle nuances that some people don't think about when it comes to training and, and doing, and doing that as a professional gig. Yeah, and I enjoyed get like he he brought his sister on for uh, he did, a story, yeah. which I thought was great. And I think too the cool part was we ran into a kid who uh, him and his buddy came just because of Matt Hughes. Like they're not Comic Con type people, right? But being there, they're like, this is kind of cool. And then also getting to see like somebody else's fandom for somebody because they're like, man, like he's the reason I'm like training and trying to get into like mixed martial arts and do all these things. And you know, like we have that with all types of people that we run into, but to see that was just kind of cool to like have that secondhand fandom, um, which I always enjoy for stuff. Oh, for sure. For sure. I like seeing, I like seeing somebody like a thing. Oh, agreed. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, that was Matt Hughes. You can check him out. He's got lots of interviews and stuff on uh, YouTube. Um, go and check some out some of his fights. Um, but with that, I'll do a little bit of housekeeping. Visit our website, we're languagebros.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at languagebro. Email us at bros at languagebros.com. And if you like us and want to help us become the world champions of podcasting, join our Patreon like Wendy and Aaron. Nine-time super fans. Yeah. yeah. All right. Was there anything else before I close? No, I'm good, sir. All right. Well, that's all the bronze have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And remember, don't be a why. Be a why. Be a why not. not. That grip, man. Like when he grabbed my leg, whoof, I was tapping. (laughs) You were. I thought you were overselling it, but like uh, then I saw the (laughs) genuine look of fear in your eyes. That was good.